गणेशाय नम ओ मई सरस्वत नम ओ श्री गुरुवे नम ओ भूर्भुवस्व तत्सुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो देवस्मे दियो यो न प्रचोदयात कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय हरे परमात्मने प्रणत क्लेश नाशाए गोविंदाय नमो नमः नम ओंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धनम उर्वाकमेव बंधना मृत्योर मोक्षीयृतात ओ शाति 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 हरि ओम तत्सत वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू डिवाइन सोल्स इट फील्स गुड टू बी बैक आई नो वी टोक लास्ट वीक Uh, we missed last week's yog vishesh satsang but we were very busy doing other things needed in the community and we were doing non stop bhagavad gita for 8 days continuously and we finished all 18 chapters for the departed soul some of you attended may god bless all of us all the departed family may they find peace and as we continue yoga vashishta we are back on track starting today pitra paksh is about to end tomorrow is the last day of pitra paksh and then from 15th we have navratri nine nights of mother worship mother worship three nights of durga devi three nights of lakshmi devi three nights of saraswati devi which fully blends with our integral yoga durga devi represents energy three days of shakti three days of bhakti three days of mukti and the 10th day is vijayadashmi celebration of the soul so beautiful time we will continue this sunday i will see if we'll continue bhagavad gita or should we do um bhagavatam since it's special event special time for the devi uh, we celebrate it four times a year although october and march and april are the biggest events and then there are two for nine days celebrations but they are in um, they are called gupta navratri not many people know of them so let us join our hands together be in the present moment thank god for the infinite blessings he has given to each of us where we are enjoying this nectar of satsanga and dealing with our day to day responsibilities also bad bhagi manav tan pawa it is a big blessing to have a human life and to have this insight where we understand what the true purpose of life is our humble prostrations to the all pervading brahman to our worshipful guru ji swami jyotirmayanand ji maharaj to all the sages and saints all the scriptures all the holy pilgrimage centers and to the divinity in each and every one of you ghat ghat mein hai sai ramata katuk vachan mat bolve there is god in every living being everything that has consciousness so with that let us pray for universal peace may there be happiness joy love 
and let us all chant uh, even when we are not doing satsang chanting triambakam mantra during this difficult time where so many wars are going on ukraine and russia israel and palestinians and gaza and all this stuff so chanting triambakam mantra and giving it to those affected families who are hurt or who have been affected or who may be hostages those kind of people who are really struggling may our blessings reach them and may we do a mala one mala if we have additional time and selflessly donate it to the cause of world peace triambakam mantra is very helpful so with that prayer let us read swami ji's message for today swami ji says blessed self adorations sit still in med- and meditate upon freedom what is freedom you don't appreciate it while you have it but only when you lose it do you recognize the importance free breathe deeply smell the air walk where you want do what you want have the ability to be yourself feel that you have left your body behind and you are all mind so when you meditate just like your cars are not inside your homes <laughs> they are in the garage or they are sitting on the outside but you are in the home much in that manner be inside recognize your body but leave the body outside don't shouldn't feel anything about the body just think you are the astral body and you do it every night in your sleep you leave the body and you go in your dream somewhere far away so think that you are the mind at this point and free yourself from the body confines let that mind then soar like a swan into the vastness of spiritual expansion fly away free of all problems and vexations you can be anywhere at any time in any country in any planet all up to your imagination and if you have been to a certain place the Im- imagination becomes instant very strong no airline tickets needed again to visit that place close your eyes be there enjoy connect with nature whatever gives you freedom but let aside your stress your worries and assert to yourself tell yourself i am free i am free i am not dependent on anything in this world we come alone we depart alone and god has provided us with a lot of things we need for our evolution feel that the life within you is free everything you breathe deeply freely think like that free like the breeze blowing on through the varying conditions of pleasure and pain when the wind blows it whistles you can even hear the sound <laughs> of the breeze you are eternally free forever untouched by this world your body may get wet your mind may feel pain and pleasure but your atma your consciousness is always free we get confused and we say i am sad or i am happy but all these are conditions that come and go inwardly you are ever free may god bless you yours in the lord swami jyotirmananda so swami ji's beautiful guidance which if we do during our meditations there are many meditation exercises like this 
many of them that we can do and that give us it works like a guided meditation so when you read it you close your eyes contemplate on it and go deeper and deeper sometimes people do japa like they are doing their mantra and then they go into a meditative trance so some people ask should we still do the mala swami ji we feel like we if we feel like meditating the answer is yes immediately stop it don't count the beads anymore the whole reason of you doing that is you get to that moment of intense peace it's like knocking on the door you ring the bell if the door opens will you ring the bell no the door has opened you are being greeted so go in go in that is what always the idea of meditation japa all these things are these are initial tools to help us go deeper and deeper when we get to that point then fly away till you come back <laughs> so may god bless you yours in the lord let us do our kirtan for today and then we will continue yoga vashisht <clears throat> jay ganesh jay ganesh jay ganesh pahi mam shri ganesh shri ganesh shri ganesh rakshamam charavan bhav charavan bhav charavan bhav pahi mam kartike a kartike a kartike a rakshamam jay saraswati jay saraswati jay saraswati pahi mam shri saraswati shri saraswati shri saraswati rakshamam jay guru shiv guru hari guru ram जगत गुरु परम गुरु सद गुरु श्याम ओ मादि गुरु अद्वैत गुरु आनंद गुरु ओम चिद गुरु चिद घन गुरु चिन्मया गुरु ओम जगत गुरु ओम गुरु सचिदानंदा शंकराचार्य शिवानंदा ज्योतिर्मयानंदा ओम नम शिवा ओम नम शिवा ओम नम शिवा ओम नम शिवा शिव 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 शिवाय नम ओम हर 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 नम शिवाय ओम नमो नारायणाय ओम नमो नारायणाय ओम नमो नारायणाय ओम नमो नारायणाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते रामचंद्राय हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे आंजनेया 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 पाही माम हनुमंता 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 रक्षा माम ओम शक्ति ओम शक्ति ओम शक्ति पाही माम ब्रह्मा शक्ति विष्णु शक्ति शिव शक्ति रक्षा माम आदि शक्ति महाशक्ति पराशक्ति पाही माम इच्छा शक्ति क्रिया शक्ति ज्ञान शक्ति रक्ष माम गंगा रानी गंगा रानी गंगा रानी पाही माम भागीरथी 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 रक्ष माम हरि ओम हरि ओम हरि 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 ओम हरि ओम हरि ओम हरि 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 ओम ओम शांति ओम शांति ओम शांति 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 
So we are on the concluding phase of Yoga Vashishta, Nirvana Prakarana. The whole scripture is about the glory of enlightenment, why we should do it, why is it worthwhile, what does a human body mean, and it has lots of stories within stories, details within details. It takes years and years to complete it. You can read it quickly, but to understand it, it takes a long time. So, Sage Vashishta and his disciple, none else but Lord Rama himself, King Dashrat's son. So, we are on section number 199. A sage performs actions for the well-being of the world. And there are countless sages who are doing that. Performing actions for the world. Whatever action is performed with a serene mind and an enlightened intellect is ever faultless because such actions do not create karmic entanglements for the sage. Why? Because there is no more karma. It all becomes karma yoga, connected with God. Whatever the sage does, meaning enlightened people, whatever enlightened people do, they are beyond karma. Therefore, aspirants are guided to do more nishkamya karma. Do your action, but don't be too interested in the fruit of the action. Try to do more selfless seva, selfless service when possible. Of course, you have to earn and eat and pay, pay your bills. All that's okay. That is part of dharma. But then a big component of our life should also be to help others and to focus on this moksha. Moksha means liberation. Sages are beyond that. They have passed that stage. Whatever action they do becomes a blessing for the universe. In this world, there are enlightened sages from different castes and orders of society. There are enlightened people in every religion, in every country, everywhere. But they are rare, very rare. Because the masses are connected to the body, to the mind, to the intellect, to the sense pleasures. And these sages have done a lot of tapasya, penance, going against the grain to get to that state. And self-effort is always needed. It never happens on its own. You have to, we have to put in our sincere effort. But it becomes easier once you become an aspirant. Then you become advanced. Just like you are learning swimming, it is very hard. <laughs> because you can drink water, not like it. Some people quit, they can't do it. Whereas those who are persistent who go through the process, then they start enjoying the journey, isn't it? Swimming becomes fun. Then they look forward to it. Much in the same way, when satsanga becomes fun, joyful, then your progress becomes spontaneous. Jaldi hone lagta hai. Karya. Accordingly, they conduct themselves differently. Different sages, different countries, different languages, different wearing habits, different talking, different things. But one thing is common, that they are all enlightened. They have all attained the glory of the self. So therefore, nothing is contradicted. They can continue whatever faith they have. They can continue whatever foods they like. 
nothing changes accordingly they conduct themselves differently and yet they are all ever liberated how because of purity so nothing will change at the practical level when the a wave is still a wave it will come out of the ocean and merge back into the ocean an enlightened wave however knows it is ocean it is not the wave anymore so it is not different from the ocean it has known that and therefore it is no more afraid of falling or breaking or what will happen it knows it's the ocean only but yet externally externally it appears exactly the same to people when somebody is looking at 10 waves they will all look the same isn't it only one of them knows it's an enlightened wave so this is very much the situation with sages and saints also with enlightened people the world will always view them as masses there are royal sages such as king janaka who rule kingdoms and yet they are ever detached from the world look at this no restriction it is not that only the poor will attain enlightenment not the rich anybody with a good heart sincere effort can get to that point as we see king janaka was lord rama's father in law sita's father mother sita's father and i've been there i've been to nepal and there's a place called janakpur janakpur where lord rama and sita got married i've been so blessed i've been to all these places in the ramayana whatever we read i have been to hanuman ji's home where he was born and i climbed 600 775 steps you get the energy you don't know how, i mean it's amazing how i went to gomukh gomukh is the place where ganga starts some of you i think were watching my daily videos i was trying to post from india and i have a desire next year also to go we will see how divine plan works out there are sages among brahmins among kshatriyas vaishyas shudras so sages saints there is no qualification to say you have to be born in this family or in this culture you can be anywhere you can be a brahman meaning the highly intellectual class kshatriya a warrior class vaishya a merchant class or a shudra shudra is the serving class they perform different duties an enlightened brahman performs duties such as conducting worships of god studying dis- disseminating the teachings of the scriptures all that that's why brahmins get are very highly regarded in india but each person is doing his specialized skill in your body your head is the brahman because it does the thinking it does the analysis it does the the all the major analytical work your arms are the kshatriya they do the defending the fighting the work your stomach is the vaishya <laughs> you to feed it you have to earn and then your legs are the shudra they serve the whole body so it becomes a holistic process same in the same way enlightened people can be from any caste any tribe any country any religion doesn't matter but once enlightened they are all universal then they are not bound by these little threads of culture religion race and all practically the body will live like that but then ultimately they have all transcended in the same manner sages from other castes perform their different duties there are some sages who abide in forests far away from human associations they live all by themselves some of them are in high up in the himalayas where we can't even think of going 
every step is dangerous, full of snow and storms. And they live there where they practice intense meditation and live with the deer and other animals in the forest. That has become their nature. There are other sages who live in holy places like pilgrimage centers or in the ashrams of great souls where they devote themselves to the study of scriptures, meditation on the self and dissemination of spiritual teachings. I was blessed very much last year because I stayed in these ashrams that I'm reading to you about. I lived it. <laughs> it's very beautiful. You wake up at four o'clock and there is this beautiful chanting. Below you can see the Ganga River from the Shivananda Ashram. I know Yogini Ji always posts about different saints and sages. Krishnananda Ji, Chidanand Ji. I have met them um, in physical form. I must be their blessings. That's how I came to Swami Jyotirmananda Ji, Maharaj, and all these beautiful people. But these ashrams, and then there's an ashram in Uttarkashi. It is um, about a seven-hour drive higher than Shivanand. Shivanand ashram is in Rishikesh. Most foreigners only know about Rishikesh. But uh, Uttarkashi, Gangotri, it is about another eight hours uh, to nine hours drive uphill, high up in the mountains. You go up another four or five thousand feet. Uh, must be around 15, 16,000 feet feet high so and over here Lake Tahoe is what 6200 feet so very the elevations in the Himalayas are three times higher very cold full of snow you can see snow peaks and everything but the river Bhagirathi river flows behind that ashram and they're following the traditional rules they wake up like currently we have um, Shankarji and uh, Miraji. What time is it there? You can type in Shankarji if you are awake, uh, if you are um, listening. What is it? 4.45 in the morning. So um, that way most people wake up and 5 o'clock the chanting starts. It goes on till 6, 6.15. Then you have a cup of tea. That life is, I tell you, it's priceless. Not that we can't find it over here. We can create that environment anywhere. But when you have that kind of serenity that they are talking about, uh, definitely if one can afford it and one has the time and can take vacation time, uh, it is highly recommended. Because that uh, transformation of the body, mind, and away from your environment in a different holy place will give you a, a boost for sure. Some sages renounce their homelands and live in foreign lands, while others roam from one forest to another or from one city to another. They are called parivrajik. I met some women saints like that also. So it's not just a, even though India is a fairly male dominated, uh, spirituality is a very, used to be a very male dominated field. But now you see a lot of women folk are also welcomed and they are, um, they are attending. And I met two female saints in the Himalayas, deep uh, in the Gangotri area, um, where we could not last there for five hours straight. And they have been living there in like a little hut and um, all they have is faith, energy and a radiant smile. I think I posted some pictures of them also in my journey to India. So these things are not stories. This is why probably when I tell you these things, I am blessed to witness them in physical form also. And um, that makes a big difference. It's like a picture of food versus eating the food. <laughs> so it's very joyful living in the ashram. And I didn't live for one or two days. I lived 
for three weeks in one ashram, three weeks in another. So 20, 20 days, that gives you a good flavor of the place. You get to roam around, you get to know the people, you get to serve the ashram. So that's what they do. So some of them just roam, some of them, uh, Swami Chinmayananda Ji Maharaj, where another very well-known saint in America, uh, he created the Chinmaya mission. His Guruji was Tapovan Maharaj. Tapovan Maharaj, tap, uh, one means forest, Tapo means penance. So he did so much uh, tapasya that, and he would always go with just a big gown and with empty hands. And he would go in places where there would be lions and tigers and, the fu and, and all kinds of dangerous things. But he loved the mountains. And always he would not have, he didn't have a backpack <laughs> like us, you know, carrying so many things. What if I need this? What if I need that? He lived his life like that. Can you believe that? And every time there is a shlok in the Bhagavad Gita, Ananyascha chintayanto maam ye jana pariyopasate tesham abhiyukta naam Meaning, Lord Krishna says, if you give yourself to me, I will take care of you. That is my promise to you. You continue your life and I will be working like your servant. Think about that for a minute, what God is telling you. And this is, if you read Swami Tapovanji Maharaj, T A P O V A N Tapovan Chinmayananda ji is Guruji. And Chinmayananda had to do one hour, one year of severe penance up in the Himalayas. Every morning, four o'clock, he had to take cold shower in the Ganges. And the water was so cold, uh, forget about waking up. He had to be then ready for the classes which started at 5 a.m. Uh, so, uh, there is no comparison to what these sages and saints have done versus what we are trying to do in the luxury of our homes and all. So we are being very much blessed. We have all these facilities and they have done a lot of tapasya. But Tapavanji Maharaj, he would go and um, with no food and invariably he would get some food from somewhere whether it would be the common village folk or in the jungle, sometimes robbers, they wanted to rob him once. And when they saw that he was fearless and he had nothing, they said, aren't you scared? Don't you know? What are you doing? The next village is about 40 miles. Uh, how will you eat? How, what, I mean, aren't you, aren't you worried what will happen to you? He says, why? How have you come to me? And they had the food, they fed him. And they were so moved by his life that they all became his disciples. Imagine people who were leading a life of crime. That's what happens when purity meets, when your heart is absolutely pure, taintless and full of love. So these, um, and I've been, I've been to these places. I've been to Tapovanji's Gangotri. Gangotri is very high before you do the trek to Gomuk, which is another 18 kilometers of walking. So uh, it's as if by divine blessings, I got invited to Tapovanji's Kutia and I was served the dinner and I had a just the saint and I, two of us, we had dinner together and we did Aarti. And it was as if Tapovan Maharaj, he's no longer in body form, but it's as if he invited me and pulled me from everything else to spend a day with him. And it happens, I'm telling you, when you start doing these things, you will no longer marvel at these miracles. They will follow you. They will become a part of your uh, journey. So many of these things happened that... Um, it's not good to narrate too many because it looks like then that we are being arrogant. I'm always humbled. Whenever that happens, I just have tears of gratitude and thank you to our Guruji. 
Swami Jyotirmanand Ji Maharaj, because it's His blessings that take me everywhere. Whatever I do, it's His blessings. So some having attained enlightenment enter into sannyasa order. You know this sannyasa thing is very deep in Hindu philosophy. Um, some people take sannyas after getting enlightened, and some people take it in order to get enlightenment. First, they take they take guru diksha, then they get enlightened. And it's rare now that somebody is already enlightened and takes sannyas. One example is sage Yagya Valkya. Sage Yagya Valkya. Uh, if you read Brihad Aranyak Upanishad. I don't know, all of you are serious advanced aspirants. If you have read that Upanishad, let me know. Oh, so Maria Ji is saying it's not even 4 a.m. So they are doing perfect Brahma Mahurata. Brahma Mahurata, 4 o'clock is ideal. Beautiful time. And not to mention the tapasya you are all doing. Shankar Ji does it. Maria Ji does it. And um, it's a beautiful way to start your day with a satsang that to a live satsang. So it's just how we all do it in ashram still in India like this. So Sage Yagya Valkya renounced his household life for uploading, upholding the traditions of sannyasa. He didn't have to take sannyasa because he's already enlightened. But then they do it because of dharma artha kama moksha to set an example for the world and then to become to guide the world as expert enlightened personalities where they are no longer bound by family duties otherwise they are um, reducing the chances of sincere aspirants to grow they give themselves wholeheartedly there was a sage, Dadichi, Dadichi, who gave up his whole body even. He gave up his body for the devtas because they needed to wake up, make a weapon and to kill the demons. Such is the glory of saints, such is their graciousness, their love for humanity, that they even give up their body gladly if they have to. So here in this chapter, we are being uh, exposed to different saints, different enlightened people, how they behave, which culture they are from, what they look like, what they do. So some attain enlightenment in Brahmacharya Ashram, celibate stage of life. So it all depends. What have you done in your past lives? What did your karmas look like? What have you already brought with you? and what you are earning and putting in now. So it's a dual force effect. All of you who are sincere aspirants have not reached here by mistake, by chance. You have been working on this for a long time, long time. And those of you who are blessed with a guru, I think Yogini Ji said it all in today's post. Those who have read it, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat Param Brahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Venama. There is no comparison, no second. Doesn't matter how intellectually adept, smart you may become. See, Ramakrishna Paramhans created Vivekananda. Vivekananda became very famous. He came to the West and he... Um, he, he was written up in every magazine. He went to the Chicago Conference of International Religions and uh, shook up the world with his um, command on spirituality and the divinity. But yet, and his guru is uh, was an Ill, total illiterate. Didn't know how to write or doesn't know how to write anything. Yet, Vivekananda always had tears in his eyes and gratitude to his guru because of him he reached where he was became what he was this all this worldly success this intellectual knowledge and the money we make and all that means very little ultimately this knowledge of the self is way beyond our imaginations what we think what we do 
So there are different stages. You can attain enlightenment in your early years or later years or in future lives. Nobody knows. But one thing is there that in this human embodiment, we should put in every sincere effort to attain enlightenment. And it's very much possible in this human body. That is why I got attracted to my guru who said, we can do it. Otherwise, um, it would only be a theoretical concept, isn't it? So it is not theoretical. It is practical. Many have done it. You can also do it. But you have to be willing to put in the effort and pay the price. Some sages have renounced their homes. Some abide in one place. While others continue to move from one place to another, just like we discussed. I gave you practical examples of Tapovanji Maharaj and then Swami Shivananda himself, who was a wonderful doctor, lived in Malaysia, very successful, earned a lot of money. Then this uh, realization came to him he, and he would treat. Even then he was treating people free with his own money. <laughs> People didn't have the money. He would buy them the medicine also. Diagnose their treatment, give them the... Who does that in today's world of this pharmaceutical drugs and greed and everything? So he then had this calling and he did everything, created this ashram. And today that Shivananda ashram is uh, beautifully glowing with um, glory, success, and they have branches all over the world. When Swami Shivananda had started, he had a small little hut from where he started that this whole concept. And young kids would come, 21, 22 years old, like really raw and young. Our Guruji was only 21 when he went to the, uh, to the ashram. And 22, he took sannyasa. So many of them, Satchidananji Maharaj, Swami Shri, they, those breeds are gone. That generation is gone. But every one of them who touched, who, who was touched, attained enlightenment. Because they were putting in intense effort and Swami Shivanan told them, this is it. You have to do it. Then you have to go give this knowledge to others. So there are who, and now our Swamiji is 92. Two, 93 he will turn in February so um, few more months so there are others who without attaining enlightenment have developed the false notion that they are enlightened <laughs> see back then Vashishta Muni wrote this and this sentence is worth so much value today because there are so many groups, so many internet things, so many people misguiding others, so much blind leading the blind, have no idea what it is, don't know, don't want to know, and yet they will want to preach. They would want to uh, have disciples. How can you? It's better to be a good disciple than try to be a guru. You should always be, a, every guru should be a disciple first. For me, I'll always be a disciple at the holy feet of my guru, the dust of his holy feet, no matter how much knowledge I have, because everything is coming from that source. What do I have? What can I give? So through his grace, Guru Sakshat Param Brahma, Guru Kripa, there is the shloka, they say, Dhyana Moolam Gurur Murtam Puja Moolam Guru Padam Mantra Moolam Gurur Makyam Moksh Moolam Guru Kripa Dhyana Moolam Gurur Murtam When you should look at your Guru, you should get into a trance like you are looking at Krishna or your deity, whatever your favorite Isht is or your favorite sight, Dhyana Moolam, it should do that to you. Dhyana Moolam Guru Murtam, Puja Moolam Guru Padam. Guru's feet should be the most cherished, most cherished uh, item, like the lotus feet. That's why we say the lotus feet of the Guru, because he has gone, done things, done the tapasyas, everything. And now he's giving all that in essence form to you. 
therefore like the lotus flower doesn't have any water on it it beads up and gives it back to the world such is the grace of the guru puja moolam guru pada mantra moolam guru vakyam whatever the guru says becomes a mantra mantra is um, controlling your mind mantra meaning uh, it tra means three so the illusion of sattva rajas tamas is gone when your mind is in meditation when you are deeply so dhyan moolam guru vakyam whatever the guru says puts you into a meditative state and moksha moolam guru kripa meaning his grace will get you enlightened of course you have to do your work just grace grace is there but without the grace your work becomes effort like no matter what you do if you have displeased your guru you will fail you will falter your ego will come in some other obstacle will come in and many fall many of them fall away because they attain some siddhis they get some powers or they get some praise from people where they say oh wonderful you are so wonderful very good and the person says hmm maybe i really am that good so then and they are good but what happens unknowingly they have hurt themselves by letting that ego crop in creep in and then it starts to decline slowly their peace starts to decline so always remain a disciple no matter how famous you become how much bigger than the guru you become to me if we if our eyes don't get wet if we don't cry with the thought of our guru who is guru grace of god is guru only what is guru who is guru who is a human human being is not a guru please understand it is the divine grace of god like that swami krishnananda ji is post today when god is pleased he will bless you with a guru you have not done it the energy within you something makes you do it and that energy is beyond you that is what this whole concept of and it is very misunderstood of course because people who are not at this level that's why this is a, a yoga vashishta is not for average people i will tell you it is for serious aspirants that's why we are all you are waking up at 4 some of you in the morning and attending it because there is this hunger this urge average people will not have that urge they will be sleeping so that means there is some previous punya lot of merits have come to all of you each of you who are sincerely doing it and no matter what you do few decades from now few 40 50 years from now we'll all get old we'll all pass away one at a time what will what will remain is what you did while you had the time and the option but there are some that's why vashishth muni is saying they have developed the false notion that they are enlightened and you cannot fake it you either have it or you don't have it that's it led by delusion they perform prohibited actions and fall from the path that leads to liberation see this is caution for all of us to walk just like when you are climbing a steep mountain every step you take is full of danger full of risks one wrong move and you come stumbling down and that is how this path is also it requires a lot of care and if we do prohibited actions then liberation they say right before the door to liberation there is another very tempting gate to hell <laughs> you say okay i'm so tired let me just take a peek that's it that is it so we have to be very cautious about this journey and if we are sincere then nothing to fear nothing to be afraid we will succeed no doubt it may take time but we will succeed 
neither abiding in the forest nor living at home can lead one to liberation what is the answer what is the answer the answer doesn't lie externally many people think oh let me go to the himalayas let me give up my job let me do this let me do that maybe i'll get enlightened that way it does not work <laughs> <laughs> it's not that simple you see the problem is you it's all in you so you have to figure it out as to what should happen what should you do what will give you joy neither performance of actions nor their abandonment is the cause of enlightenment see very deep many people leave their homes and do this and leave their jobs thinking they will get enlightenment it doesn't come it's not that simple you can't fake the system you can't fool it whatever there is a concept called ras buddhi ras buddhi in um, in us in each of us in gita there is a beautiful shloka also that you may forcibly ex stay away from the sense pleasures forcibly but inwardly you are attached to the senses you keep thinking of those things again and again and again because of the joyful experience you had when you had contact with them and therein lies the problem many people leave they forcibly don't look at those objects they go to forest thinking that they have given it up but guess what happens there there they are thinking about it <laughs> even more so ras buddhi is the problem and unless that goes away unless that is absorbed and extracted and gone so it's like a tumor that will keep on coming up unless you go to the root root has to be removed the ras has to be operated upon these these bhagavad gita shlokas these uh, scriptures they're very incisive they're very deep and we have to go through our surgeries there is no easy way no easy way but definitely it is the right answer if you are if you are going to go north you have to go to north but by mistake you took a highway that is taking you to south by mistake now every mile you are going is taking you away further away from your destination isn't it the more south you go the more away from north you get and then eventually somebody tells you oh north is on that side what do you do what choice do you have turn back <laughs> undo everything you have done to go back on north isn't it so that is what most people who have got lost in the world process have to do whereas aspirants sadhaks they start from where they left off you are already on north you have already uh, covered 50% 60% 70% of the way now you are stopping at a rest area you are taking a break enjoying your coffee everything is good what i mean by that is death then you start again from that rest area only you now have only 30% left that is the way to enlightenment and if you are very blessed very smart you cover it all in in this very life only so they say how we get there it's not important you have to have the drive you will get there guru will make sure they don't leave you once you become a part of the guru shishya parampara it's a whole lineage whole lineage 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 all the way there is no such thing as only swami nikhilananda and swami jyotirmayananda then it is swami shivananda then it is swami govinda charya it the way it goes is i don't know many of you may not know the shloka or you may not know your lineage but it is very very important because otherwise there are blind leading the blind i am i'm self made guru who made you i don't know i just felt like being a guru what can you guide how will you guide anybody else you don't even have the proper uh, energy centers to protect you so basically it says 
ओम नारायण पद्म भवम वशिष्ठ शक्ति त्र पुत्र पराशरम च व्यास शुकम गौड़ पदम महांत गोविंद योगींद्र मथा से शिष्य श्री शंकराचार्य मथा से पद्म पाद च हस्तमलक शिष्यम तम त्रोटक वार्तिकार मन्यन अस्मत गुरून संतत मानतो अस्मी दिस इज द लीनियज आई जस्ट चैंटेड फॉर यू सम अदर डे आई विल एक्सप्लेन टू यू द मीनिंग and what each of that word means if you will remind me <laughs> but it is very profound very deep because it takes you all the way to lord narayana who is lord narayana lord vishnu lord vishnu who takes different incarnations sometimes as rama sometimes as krishna sometimes as narsingha sometimes as varaha all the different incarnations because he is the sustainer so that is the ultimate source om narayanam padmabham padmabham is um, brahma ji the creator so it takes us all the way to that channel and then shankaracharya of course we chant even in our satsang he is the guru who created the sanyasi process of enlightenment and giving this knowledge divine knowledge to sincere aspirants so neither abiding it is the knowledge of the self alone that confers liberation on a person neither performance of actions nor their abandonment is the cause of enlightenment it's not like you give up or you start doing it it is the knowledge of the self alone it's called gyan yagya that's why we are doing gyan yagya that's why we are putting in the effort that's why we are so sincerely all coming together and trying to figure it out what is the journey of our life out of all the so many people may listen to it but how few of us are seriously thinking for everybody else it's a marketplace marketplace i'm browsing looking at this shop that shop <laughs> and then something else seems more attractive you just go so it is the knowledge of the self alone once that light comes from within you it is unmistakable nothing else can change your mind you know he whose mind dwells upon the objects of the world is immersed in the world process isn't it who's only thinking of the world is he deeply in the world process even if he does not perform actions whether good or evil so if he if you are just thinking of your favorite dessert or your favorite girlfriend or boyfriend or you are thinking of your party that you are going to go to what are you doing you are physically sitting on your chair in the office but where is your brain where is your mind where are you going that is what is important the mind that delights in the taste of sense enjoyments is like a bee on a honey jar isn't it a bunny a honey bee loves to make honey and this honey is sense to some it sense enjoyments and to saints and sages it is satsang it is the glory of this knowledge the divine divinity within so it depends on what side of the fence you are on it cannot be driven away easily however it is by wisdom that the mind can be turned away from the objects of the world it's not so easy to turn the mind away because it has to be trained this is like a stubborn arrogant um wild horse it will take time to train it to change the direction to make it follow your orders but that happens with discipline and with time as all of you can vouch each of you who are regularly watching listening and waiting for satsang because you didn't reach here by mistake you have put in the effort you have done tapasya that is how you have reached that stage and the worldly people they have gone to casinos and every time they found that very exciting and enticing and all the glitter and the glory of the of the drinks and the alcohol and the women and the food and the ching 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 of the casinos they like it so they keep going nobody has to tell them 
little whatever little money they have they will run there only and later they will say oh, i lost everything <laughs> so in one place you are getting ruined in another place you are building positive qualities you are building sattva you are building uh, deep uh, grooves in your unconscious every satsang we do is surgery is like a surgery we are um, clearing up your blood vessels the blockages of the arteries of the world process are being cleaned and this keeps us healthy holistic happy and that is why we need to currently continue to do our sadhana continue to be healthy after we go home after the surgery the doctor will say now be careful take your medications take care of your health go for a walk build some heart muscle exercise much in the same way we have to do our uh, sadhana our satsang our effort and then we will be on the right track led by good karmas of the past one becomes inclined to satsanga or good association let me repeat led by good karmas of the past it doesn't happen automatically good karmas you only have done it in the past and you are doing it now so therefore it will accumulate it will come again and again provided you are creating that strong momentum <clears throat> satsanga is the gateway to liberation through satsang nothing else needs to be done through that you open the gates develops the qualifications for attaining liberation so when you attend satsanga what happens we start getting the nectar directly from enlightened sages saints and the qualifications for mukti or liberation and what do you bring you build healthy practices like shravana manana nididhyasana which each of you are doing right now you are doing shravana meaning you are listening to the satsanga carefully i like it when sometimes uh, maria ji says in the youtube videos i listen to it but i want to listen to it one more time that's very good because that says hmm let me go deeper let me understand it and yogini ji and i have all these conversations also because if you want to grow deeper so just listening one time is not enough sometimes you have to listen to the same thing two or three times sometimes with swami ji's lectures i keep on going back and back and back because i miss uh, some important insight <laughs> so i have to do it five times sometimes i do it too so don't don't think you are the only one doing it it's a very healthy practice actually so when we listen right now you are listening then it is called manan the second aspect is manan which is called contemplation because when i'm listening i keep going so you are following 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 me wherever i'm trying to take you or whatever i'm trying to tell you but once the satsang is over now your mind gets a breather a breath now it's breathing and thinking which areas are applicable to you what are the areas you want to grow in which will help you because some people if you are already strong in something no point doing it again you go in the areas that need improvement so you do manana that is called reflection and finally you do meditation which is called nididhyasana so listening reflection meditation they should all be aligned together on the self meditation on the self self meaning the atma atma is this is who you really are but we don't cannot see it yet so we have to imagine work hard at it try to analyze it etc finally one attains the realization that i am brahman and becomes free of the world process 
finally it has to happen you will break the chains the light will come and that light that is generating the light to your intellect the intellect is giving it to the mind the mind to the senses the senses to the objects the objects to the world and you say i am seeing i am observing i am experiencing but you are not focusing on the fifth layer of anandamaya kosha that bliss sheet beyond which is this light so we have to uncover these layers one at a time slowly this is vashisht muni he is guiding lord rama he says oh rama oh rama may you abide as an enlightened sage in whom the sun of wisdom has dawned so by now rama both the guru and the disciple have merged into one they have both uh, uh, the guru was already enlightened but just like one lit candle lights another candle that also gets lit lord rama has also attained that state and the darkness of defect has vanished wisdom when wisdom dawns then what is the darkness of defect attachments hatred um avidya ignorance raga dvesha hit, um, attachment hatred and fear of death all these things they are um, they vanish go away and the firmament of the heart has become free of the clouds of doubt and delusion so there is all this doubt i don't know should i can i will i all that is gone because now you can practically see it you don't need any more uh, confirmations because you can see the light within that light meaning not just the physical light we are talking about but the light of wisdom where no more doubts no more questions atma tript it's called atma tripti which means that you you find yourself by yourself and you are contented contented at that stage you both merge into one you become brahman there is nothing more to do but you don't go and advertise you basically are enjoying the nectar within and you can't express it to anybody because it is beyond everybody's comprehension so shri valmiki relates at this stage shri rama as well as all the listeners of the assembly hall of king dashratha became still they became immersed in samadhi meaning that was such joyful experience for all of them because it transcended time it transcended space beyond anything seeing this shri vashishta ceased from speaking and the black bee of his mind began to enjoy the nectar of bliss in the lotus of the heart why do we need to speak because we need to understand isn't it i am trying to explain something you are trying to listen something when you speak i listen so on but suppose we both are happy we don't have any questions then our voice is only an obstacle it is creating noise better to be calm quiet and when you are enjoying the meditation you enjoy that silence so that's what sage vashishta did and so did all the all the people in the kingdom they all in the in the big royal court where they were attending this satsanga they all were immersed in samadhi that bliss that joy that experience was more powerful than words and words are not needed when there are no questions so section 200 siddhas praise sage vashishta siddhas are enlightened beings siddh purush means these are they are already all of them are enlightened but yet they also enjoy the satsanga because they want to see other people succeed and they want to enjoy the glory 
of that creation and that miracle that they have attained again and again and again just like you eat your favorite food many times you don't do it once shri valmiki said o bhardwaja bhardwaj rishi is a very they are all like the seven sages you know they are all famous saints o bhardwaj when shri vashishtha concluded his teachings pertaining to nirvana there arose a great clamor of the siddhas and celestial beings began to shower their praises on sage vashishtha so now as the teachings are have concluded all the siddhas celestial beings everybody is full of gratefulness and praise in addition the celestial beings sounded their trumpets and the mingled sounds echoed with the surrounding mountains so that was the glory of that feeling where even the gods came down to enjoy this beautiful experience gods showered flowers from all directions and everywhere the flowers fell like snowflakes from the sky so it was such a divine experience for everybody the siddhas from the heavens and uh, celestial beings siddhas and also all the royalties in the court who were none other than the gurus and dashrath and lord rama the assembly hall was covered with flowers the mountains resounded with the sounds of heavenly trumpets drums and other musical instruments and the pollen from the flowers had covered the face of the sky the very atmosphere was laden with heavenly fragrance that's what they say even when lord rama and lord krishna were born they say lotuses started blooming at night and uh, spring season came during winter time because all of nature celebrates that occasion they break their rules for divinity they don't follow the local order anymore because they all want to honor this beautiful occasion that beautiful time so such as this is what happened in this case all the heavens gods and all the musical instruments that you can imagine were all in synchrony and beautiful environment not only the listeners from the assembly hall but even the birds and beasts lifted their heads with a deep sense of awe we sometimes discount these animals but they are very sensitive they know where i grew up in india in kirti nagar um there is a there's a dog i don't know if he's alive anymore but he uh tuesdays as you know is hanuman ji's day right most of you know tuesday and saturday but tuesday more so and lot of people in india they go to the temples on tuesday so um and lot of beggars are outside also waiting for prasad because everybody hanuman ji likes uh, bundi bundi is like uh, you know the laddus laddus are uh, ganesh ji likes the laddus the round balls but bundi is like very small but when you bite it it um, it has rus in it i priya ji knows jalebi i know you know jalebi because you sent us the pictures of it but this is called bundi b o o n d i you can google it and you will see these are like little little um, juicy balls of um ne- they taste so beautiful like it's like jalebi but they are full of they have more juice in it very sweet very wonderful so that's the prasad that's given and um, so there's this dog he comes and tuesday this dog becomes a vegetarian he will refuse to eat meat that day you give it his face turns he only wants bundi <laughs> and people have done it they have actually tested it out give try to give him some meat and all that he refuses it he's just waiting there outside with the beggars 
and when he gets the bundi, he graciously eats it, acknowledges it. How would you define that? What would you say to that dog? Better than a human being in so many ways. <laughs> we as humans can't even keep up with our sense pleasures. And here's a dog who has got more discipline. So, uh, here, Vashisht Muni is saying, these animals are also, and that's what uh, with Tapavanji Maharaj, Swami Ram Tirth Maharaj, all these people were fearless. They would go and animals would uh, not harm them at all. They, would, they had that oneness with them because they could feel that they would not be harmed. They could sense the love in them, in their body language, in their smell, everything. So here also, the beasts were also grateful for the lecture and the guidance. With the ceaseless showers of flowers and the eloquent expressions of praise, the earth and the heavens created a wondrous sight. This beautiful, blissful, very joyful, and everybody enjoyed it. The Siddha said, it appeared as if the ocean of festivity began to surge with the tossing waves of joy. So like you, when you are marrying your daughter or you yourself are getting married, imagine the emotions that you go through when you have given birth to your baby and you are holding the baby in your arms the first time the nurse has just brought it to you. How do you feel? How can you express it? Somebody says, how do you feel? Can you write an essay on it? <laughs> no matter what you do, you cannot express it. You cannot quantify it. And this is the experience of the self also. So here, all this kind of joy and festivity is going on. And with the quieting, quietening down of the commotion, the words of Siddha's became more audible. What the Siddhas, meaning these uh, gurus, gurus, enlightened masters were trying to say. The, the Siddha said, we have lectured on spiritual teachings a thousand times in the midst of eager aspirants. So the aspirants were eager and we have also given beautiful lectures also, we have heard the teachings of many other teachers, but never have we come across teachings similar to those given by Sage Vashishtha to Rama. So, Om Narayanam Padma Bhavam Vashishtam. So, Vashishtha is the son of Lord Brahma. And he continues on. Even today, when we read Yoga Vashishtha, we are invoking him. That's how you find peace. His blessings come to you. Guruji's blessings come to you. All this without faith, we will be zero. Nothing we will get. We will just run here, there and we will die. That's all will happen. But if we have faith and love and bhakti, devotion, then all that is multiplied. It becomes geometrical progression. Like I tell people, otherwise we are like billionaires. Even if you have a billion dollars and you are away from God, that is multiplying billion dollars with zero. And every third grader will tell you anything multiplied with zero becomes, you got it, zero only. So don't judge yourself or don't judge others by the wealth, the cars, the houses they live in, the clothes they wear how expensive their diamond rings are. All that stuff is just that stuff. Nothing goes with you. Not even the broken eye of a needle can go. But what you are doing now will go with you. Your satsang will go with you. Your selfless effort will go with you. Your bhakti will go with you. And oh, by the way, your wrong things will also go with you. If we have done lustful things, lustful thoughts, bad habits, this, that, well, that also goes because your mind, senses, intellect, ego, all of it is called antahakarana. Your inner instruments, they go with you. Why do we say purify, 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 don't do wrong things, do good things? For that reason, 
more grass than weeds we need otherwise the problem is not a good one not a good solution so this is what the siddhas are saying that we are so blessed to have these teachings from vashishta sage vashishta to lord rama the sage has expounded the nature of brahman with the help of parables illustrations arguments and all possible methods how many questions did lord rama ask how many questions does arjuna ask see these are done intentionally to help us they already know but they are asking for our benefit so we can benefit we can evolve we can grow so his intense love for rama is beyond compare whose vashishthas there is no relationship like the guru disciple relationship dhyan moolam gurur murtim that's why they say uh, tumeva mata cha pita tumeva tumeva bandhus cha sakha tumeva tumeva vidya dravidam tumeva tumeva sarvam mama dev deva so the devotee then says to the guru the aspirant that you are my father you are my mother tumeva mata cha pita tumeva bandhu you are my friend and you are my like my child also tumeva vidya you are the knowledge and you are the my wealth everything that i have is you tumeva sarvam you are my everything mama deva deva you are my deity also because of this divinity i have reached the state where i am comprehending these deep concepts otherwise i would have been far away scriptures are complicated you will not understand them by yourself initially till a guru comes and sheds the light on it otherwise the same scripture will say enlightenment is a dual edged sword it is very hard to get enlightened then the scripture will also say it is as easy as plucking a flower so which one is it the same scripture is saying it's easy and it's also saying it's hard so that's when a guru comes in like you get your spectacles are based on your vision your number will be different than somebody else's number isn't it so each disciple has to be addressed according to his needs there is no such thing as a one size fits all in spirituality we are all struggling suffering from different problems different pain different diseases and different cure is needed therefore so in this case his intense love of rama which is because he is rama's guru and he is caring so deeply for him that he is giving like we say god is like a million mothers combined that's a metaphor i mean your one mother is so sweet she will give herself she will feed stay hungry so you can be fed isn't it but god is million times more compassionate than the human mother why because he has created this world and he has created you when you are in pain he is in more pain please understand so he knows everything but just like a mother has to take the child to the doctor to get shots for his own good god has to take us to our experience through our experience for our benefit only so by listening to his teachings even animals and birds have become free of all miseries why does that happen they don't understand english or sanskrit but the tone the vibrations the environment the feelings all speak they all convey when you look at a dog he will know what 
kind of a person you are are you filled with love or anger what kind of a day you had they will know so what to speak of human beings so when even animals are benefiting imagine people who are intelligent smart educated sitting and trying to understand having feasted upon his nectar in words through our years we have enjoyed a rare fortune of our lives meaning the joy of the satsanga is so intense that nothing can compare to the feeling that we are getting the people of ayodhya heard these words of the heavenly siddhas with their eyes turned towards the heavens and as they looked below they beheld the assembly hall of king dashratha covered with celestial flowers because so many gods were so happy that they were overjoyed actually ayodhya i was in ayodhya also last year when i had done the ramayan yatra and many of you may know that uh, this big ram mandir lord rama's big temple is being uh, is opening in january of 2024 and that temple is so glorious so gracious uh, beautifully done because there was a lot of uh, conflict Uh, the government of india was involved there were all this uh, disputes about the muslim saying there should be a mosque here this that but finally it was decided and now uh, this grand beautiful temple is being created uh, which is um, they say it will be one of the one of the beautiful places so that will be lord rama's home but back when this in treta yuga when these scriptures were written and lord rama they had all these things in much more much greater opulence than we can ever ever imagine so they were the kings of these places and the glory was so much that they said they were even their pillars were studded with uh, gems real gems like diamonds and pearls and all that so that is will come open again in january those of who are who you are lucky enough to go um, will can actually visit that place having witnessed such a wondrous sight they worshiped sage vashishta by offering flowers at his feet when the clamor of applause calmed down to a certain extent king dashratha prostrated before the sage and worshiped him so my time is up but we have enjoyed i have enjoyed this satsang i hope you have enjoyed it as much because um, these things can only be felt we cannot express them uh, but yet we will continue this journey of section 200 and what did king dashratha say we will learn in next friday's satsang so this is let us sign off now do our aarti together and we will conclude the satsang we will see you sunday morning for bhagavad gita for the next two weeks we will be doing it from here only uh, which is even good personally i think for us it's a great blessing because then we we are not time constrained so much because then but that is also good in a way because then we do we get to meet people in in person but here um next two weeks navratri is going to happen so please continue your prayer sadhana very auspicious time for the divine mother those of you who are following uh, continue that journey and um, we will see you on sunday morning at around 11 we will start theek hai hari om tat sat hari om tat sat so let's do our aarti and then hopefully all of you are doing well with your health and everything so blessings tomorrow is the final day of uh, the departed souls puja that we talked about so hari om tat sat jay jay aarati vigna vinayak vigna vinayak shri ganesha jay jay aarati 
ಸುಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ್ಯ ಸುಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ್ಯ ಕಾರ್ತಿಕೇಯ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಆರತಿ ವೇಣುಗೋಪಾಲ ವೇಣುಗೋಪಾಲ ವೇಣು ಲೋಲ ಪಾಪ ಬಿದೂರ ನವನೀತ ಚೋರ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಆರತಿ ವೆಂಕಟರಮಣ ವೆಂಕಟರಮಣ ಸಂಕಟ ಹರಣ ಸೀತಾರಾಮ ರಾಧೆ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಆರತಿ ಗೌರಿ ಮನೋಹರ ಗೌರಿ ಮನೋಹರ ಭವಾನಿ ಶಂಕರ ಸಂಬ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಉಮಾ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಆರತಿ ರಾಜ ರಾಜೇಶ್ವರಿ ರಾಜ ರಾಜೇಶ್ವರಿ ತ್ರಿಪುರ ಸುಂದರಿ ಮಹಾಕಾಲಿ ಮಹಾಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ಮಹಾ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಮಹಾಶಕ್ತಿ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಆರತಿ ಆಂಜನೇಯ ಆಂಜನೇಯ ಹನುಮಂತ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಆರತಿ ದತ್ತಾತ್ರೇಯ ದತ್ತಾತ್ರೇಯ ತ್ರಿಮೂರ್ತಿ ಅವತಾರ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಆರತಿ ಸದ್ಗುರುನಾಥ ಸದ್ಗುರುನಾಥ ಶಿವಾನಂದ ಸದ್ಗುರುನಾಥ ಜ್ಯೋತಿರ್ಮಯನಂದ ಸದ್ಗುರುನಾಥ ಸಾಯಿ ಬಾಬಾ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಆರತಿ ವಿಘ್ನ ವಿನಾಯಕ ನಾತ್ರ ಸೂರ್ಯೋ ಭಾತಿ ನ ಚಂದ್ರ ತಾರಕ ನೇಮ ವಿದ್ಯುತ್ ಭಾತಿ ಕುತೋಯ್ಯಮಗ್ನಿ ತಮೇವ ಭಾಂತಮನುಭಾತಿ ಭಾಸಿದ ವಿಭಾತಿ ಓ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ತತ್ಸತ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಚಾಂಡ್ ತ್ರಿಯಂಬಕ ಮಂತ್ರ ಫಾರ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎನಿ ಬಡಿ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಪೇನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೂ ನೀಡ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಓಂ ತ್ರಯಂಬಕ ಯಜಾಮಹೆ ಸುಗಂಧಿ ಪುಷ್ಟಿವರ್ಧನ ಉರ್ವಾರುಕಮಿವ ಬಂಧನಾ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಮೋಕ್ಷೀಯಮೃತ ತ್ರಯಂಬಕ ಯಜಾಮಹೆ ಸುಗಂಧಿ ಪುಷ್ಟಿವರ್ಧನ ಉರ್ವಾರುಕಮಿವ ಬಂಧನಾ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷೀಯಮೃತ ತ್ರಯಂಬಕ ಯಜಾಮಹೆ ಸುಗಂಧಿ ಪುಷ್ಟಿವರ್ಧನ ಉರ್ವಾರುಕಮಿವ ಬಂಧನಾ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷೀಯ ಮಾಮೃತ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಸರ್ವಾಂ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿಭವತು ಸರ್ವಾಂ ಶಾಂತಿರ್ಭವತು ಸರ್ವಾಂ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಮಂಗಳಂ ಸರ್ವೇಂತು ಸುಖಿನ ಸರ್ವೇ ಸಂತು ನಿರಾಮಯ ಸರ್ವೇ ಭದ್ರಾ ಪಶ್ಯಂತ ಮಾ ಕಶ್ಚಿತ್ ದುಃಖ ಭಾಗ್ ಭೇತ್ ಅಸತೋ ಮಾ ಸದ್ಗಮಯ ತಂ ಸೋ ಮಾ ಜ್ಯೋತಿರ್ಗಮಯ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ ಮಾ ಅಮೃತ ಗಮಯ ಕರಚರಣ ಕಾಯಜಂ ಕರ್ಮಜ ವಾ ಶ್ರವಣ ನಯನ ಜಂ ವಾ ಮಾನಸ ವಾಪರಾಧ ವಿಹಿತ ವಿಹಿತ ವಾಮೇತಕ್ಷಮಸ್ವ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಕರುಣಾಬ್ಧೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾದೇವ ಶಂಭೋ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಕರುಣಾಬ್ಧೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾದೇವ ಶಂಭೋ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಕರುಣಾಬ್ಧೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾದೇವ ಶಂಭೋ ಓಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮರ್ಪಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಹವಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಗ್ನೌ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನಾಹುತ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೈವ ತೇನ ಗಂತವ್ಯ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಕರ್ಮ ಸಾಧಿ ಅಹಂ ವೈಶ್ವಾನರೋ ಭೂತ್ ಪ್ರಾಣಿನಾಂ ದೇಹಮಾಶ್ರಿತ ಪ್ರಾಣ ಅಪಾನ ಸುಕ್ತ ಪಚಾಮನ್ಯಂ ಚತುರ್ವಿಧ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ತತ್ಸತ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮರ್ಪಣಮಸ್ತು ಸಮಸ್ತ ಲೋಕಾ ಸುಖಿನೌ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ತತ್ಸಟ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಡಿವೈನ್ ಸೋಲ್ಸ್ ಮೇ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಬಿ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಡೆಡಿಕೇಶನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೇ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಟು ಗ್ರೋ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೇ ಯು ಬಿ ಫಿಲ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಲವ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ 
uh, we will see you on sunday and remember sunday is the first day of navaratri mother worship nine nights hari om tat sat hari om tat sat hari om tat sat we sign off now om shanti 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 hey.